நண்பர்களுக்கு வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் This is part 2 of the video Planets in Taurus. This program is brought to you by Guruji TV. This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of a renowned astrologer Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is the Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. Now I'm going to explain the effects of the planet Mercury in the house of Taurus. It is such an auspicious house for Mercury. This is a friendly house for Mercury. Mercury will be in the 12th house to Mithuna Lagna or Gemini ascendant and 9th house to the Kanya Lagna or Virgo ascendant. Mercury in this house gains the strength to deliver any benefit. And if Mercury is in conjunction with Venus, it is more beneficial. Mercury and Venus are the two planets that often get Parivartana, that is they exchange their houses as these planets are usually not far away from each other. The Parivartana or the exchange of the houses of Venus and Mercury will deliver greater benefits. The house of Taurus will do all the benefits provided the house is not 6th, 8th or 12th house to the ascendant or Rashi. The native will be very intelligent. If Taurus is trine or quadrant to the ascendant, it will deliver greater benefits. For Virgo ascendant, Taurus is 9th house and auspicious house to Virgo, it will do the greater benefits for Virgo ascendant. Even if the native is Mithuna Lagna, that is Gemini Ascendant, when Mercury is in the 12th house, it is near Digbala or directional strength. Because Lagna or first house is the Digbala house for Mercury. Often the Mercury and Venus will be in Parivartana, that is, they exchange their houses mutually. Having said all these, Mercury in Taurus will deliver the Karaka that is significance such as brilliance and mathematical knowledge. It will also deliver the Jiva Karaka that is the human relation that Mercury signifies which is maternal uncle. So the status of the maternal uncle will be good. The position of the Mercury in Taurus will make the ascendant brilliant. The Taurus house is Atimitra Bhava, that is most friendly house for Mercury. Now let us see the next planet, Jupiter. This is the favorable position for Jupiter, since Jupiter in the fixed sign is said to be auspicious. The house of Taurus is the enemy house to the Jupiter. This is the house whose Lord Venus has contrasting characters with Jupiter. Jupiter and Venus are contrary in their characters and they are like at the opposite poles. Jupiter signifies the beatitude, divine bliss, whereas Venus signifies the earthly pleasures. Please read the article that I have written where I mention the difference between the divine bliss, ecstasy delivered by Jupiter and the earthly pleasures delivered by Venus. A great saint blessed me for having written such an article. When the assistant of the saint expressed that the saint wanted to have an appointment with me, I was overwhelmed and I felt much privileged and blessed to communicate with such a great spiritual person. The article that I have mentioned here was published three to four years before. My eyes are getting welled up with tears when I recall that moment. He is such a great spiritual person 
his assistant called me on the phone and expressed that the saint wanted to talk with me and the assistant checked my availability for the appointment. I called back the saint on the phone immediately to show my respect. The saint appreciated that I have beautifully and thoughtfully explained the difference between the significance delivered by these two planets such as ecstasy delivered by Jupiter and the earthly pleasure delivered by Venus. He also added that I have written that article with such profound sense despite my young age and he appreciated me that I explained the concepts of astrology very well. He also remarked that he did not come across such an explanation anywhere else and he questioned whether the article that I wrote was entirely conceived by me. Please try to understand the intricacy of astrology. When Jupiter is in the fixed sign such as Taurus, Leo, Scorpio and Aquarius, in Tamil we call this as Guru Valayam which literally translates as Ring of Jupiter. You have to predict based on Guru Valayam the Ring of Jupiter. Jupiter is always the most beneficial planet. If Jupiter is in trine and does not get afflicted, then it delivers benefits. Jupiter can be personified as a noble man. A noble man can never stoop low in any situation. The mind of a noble man can never get corrupted in their life, whatever crucial situation they are in. As long as Jupiter is not in connection with Saturn and as long as Jupiter is not eclipsed by Rahu, then Jupiter will definitely deliver benefits despite in whichever house it is. This is a very important point that is used to assess the Subhatva of Jupiter. When you take a natal chart for prediction, first of all, you should check the status of the Sun, Moon and finally Jupiter. This is how you can make accurate predictions. It is on this ground I say that you should forget the number of the house or bhava to the ascendant. I always say astrology is beyond the numbers. The concept of my theory such as Subhatva strength, Sukshma strength and Pabhatva strength is more significant. Having said this, Jupiter residing in the house of Taurus is beneficial. Why Jupiter is inimical in Taurus? From its own Sagittarius house, Jupiter gets weakened or loses its strength in the 6th house to the Sagittarius. Jupiter loses its strength in the 3rd house to its own house Pisces. When Jupiter is in the house of Taurus, it would not be able to aspect its own house. Do you understand the logic behind the status of the enemy? Astrology is such an intricate art. If you contemplate the reasoning behind the concepts, it will amaze you. If Jupiter is in the sign of Taurus, it is in the sixth house from Sagittarius and thus loses its strength as per Bhavat Bhavam rule. And since it is in the third house to the Pisces house, it loses its strength in the house of Taurus. The planet which is highly beneficial loses its strength as per Bhavat Bhavam to the most beneficial houses in the natural zodiac such as Sagittarius and Pisces. I repeat, Jupiter loses its strength since it is in third house to the Pisces and sixth house to the Sagittarius as per Bhavat Bhavam. This is the logic behind the enemy status for Jupiter in Taurus. In a similar fashion, if Jupiter resides at Libra, 
it is at the eighth house from the Pisces. If you contemplate about the concepts of enemy status or Sthanabala status of the planets, you will definitely understand the logic behind the concepts. So even if Jupiter is in the house of Taurus, we should not assess the strength of the Jupiter as weak. And in case, if the house lord of the Taurus, that is Venus, is exalted in Pisces, then there will be mutual exchange of the houses by the house lords, that is Parivartana concept. So when Venus and Jupiter are in Parivartan, Jupiter will deliver greater benefits when it is in the house of Taurus, provided there is no connection of malefic such as Saturn or Rahu. Jupiter should not be in Pabatva in order to deliver benefits. When Jupiter is in conjunction with Mars, it is not considered Pabatva. When Jupiter is in conjunction with Mars, it is said to be Guru Mangal Yoga. So the conjunction of Jupiter and Mars is not Pabatva. In this case, Jupiter will sanctify the Mars to greater extent and Jupiter will be afflicted a very little. Imagine the situation as if Jupiter, the noble person, is with his close friend Mars, who is of little bad character. On the other hand, when Jupiter is in conjunction with Rahu, it is considered as Jupiter is along with its enemy. In this case, it is addressed as Guru Chandal Yoga. The planet that Jupiter hates, that is also of bad character, is Rahu. There is one more planet that Jupiter hates, which is Saturn. The one that Jupiter likes most, though still bad in character, is Mars. These are the relationship between Jupiter and the above mentioned planets. So, when Jupiter and Mars is in conjunction, it becomes Guru Mangal Yoga an auspicious yoga that delivers benefits. Jupiter in the house of Taurus will be beneficial according to the nature of the ascendant and which Bhava, the house of Taurus, is to the ascendant. For Upaya Lagna, that is dual sign ascendant, it is good that Jupiter loses its strength in 6th or 8th house or 12th house to the ascendant. For the Gemini ascendant, that is Mithuna Lagna, when Jupiter is in Taurus, it is in the twelfth house to the ascendant. When Jupiter is in the house of Taurus, it is near to Digbala or directional strength which is beneficial. For Gemini ascendant, when Jupiter is in the house of Taurus, it aspects following three houses. The Jupiter aspects the fourth house of the Gemini ascendant, that is Virgo or Kanya. It aspects the sixth house to the ascendant, that is Scorpio or Vrishiga. And it also aspects the eighth house to the Gemini ascendant, that is Capricorn or Makar. As per Bhava Subhatva, the houses of Kanya, Vrishiga and Makar that is Virgo, Scorpio and Capricorn will deliver greater benefits during the Dasha period of the related planets. Jupiter is in the house of Taurus whose lord is Venus. So the complete significance that is Karaga of Jupiter will be delivered. Please try to understand this video of mine based on my theory of Subhatva and Pabhatva. And please don't try to assess the strength of the planet based on the inimical status or debilitation. If you do so, you will not get the accurate prediction. What I explain to you is another dimension of Vedic astrology. A complete dimension that I perceived post many years of research and I am sharing with you now. So please try to understand this. 
Well, the next planet that we are going to discuss is Venus. The house of Taurus is the own house for Venus. The nadir will enjoy all the pleasures when Venus is in this house provided it is not afflicted by any malefic connection. Venus must not be definitely in connection with Rahu or even Saturn though it is a friend to Venus. Venus can be in conjunction with Mercury. However, the lone Venus delivers the biggest benefits. If the Venus is alone in the house of Taurus and aspects the house of Scorpio, for a Scorpio ascendant that is Vrchiga Lagna, it delivers such greater benefits. The Venus sanctifies the ascendant house of Scorpio. It is always good when Jupiter and Venus are positioned alone in a house. There are certain common statements like if Jupiter is in the fifth house, it is not auspicious. Please ignore all those common statements. As per the rule that a house gets sanctified to a greater extent by the aspect of a benefic such as Jupiter or Venus, so the position of the Venus in the house of Taurus for Scorpio ascendant is very auspicious. In a nutshell, while the malefic aspect is not auspicious to the house which is getting aspected, the aspect of a benefic is auspicious to the house that gets aspected. This is the concept of Subhatva of the Bhava that is house. So the lone Venus in the house of Taurus strengthens the house where it resides and also aspect of the Venus to the Scorpio brings greater benefits. The native will be very fortunate if the ascendant is Scorpio and it is seventh house to the Venus residing in Taurus because both Lagna Bhava and the seventh house got sanctified by Venus and does wonders for the life of the native. If the major planetary period or dasha of the Venus happens, Venus will do its house effects but the important point to note is that Venus dasha should not happen for the Scorpio ascendant native. What I have mentioned above is concept of the Subhatva of the Bhava and not the Venus dasha to the Scorpio ascendant. So please don't raise a doubt that why a native suffered during the major planetary period that is dasha of Venus despite the statement I just told you that it is very auspicious for Scorpio ascendant when the ascendant is seventh house to the Venus which is in the house of Taurus. If you ask such a question it says that you have to improve your knowledge in astrology. This is like a chain of reactions. Since house of ascendant gets Subhatva, the ascendant lord also gets Subhatva. So the native will enjoy a fortunate life provided the native does not go through the major planetary period that is Dasha of Venus. The native must go through the major planetary period of sun and moon which are auspicious to Scorpio ascendant. The skill of an astrologer lies in choosing the right combination of the rules and the exceptions based on the situation. Another example for Sagittarius ascendant that is for Danush Lagna, Venus in the house of Scorpio is inauspicious since Venus is in its own house and it is sixth house lord for Sagittarius. It will deliver deaths and diseases. Let me add one more point. There are three possible stars on which Venus can reside in the house of Taurus. The star lord or nakshatra lord can be sun, moon or Mars. Let us imagine that Venus resides in the star whose lord is moon. That is Venus resides in the Rohini nakshatra whose lord is moon and let us say it is Amavasya moon. 
then for the sagittarius ascendant or dhanush lagna venus will deliver only diseases the nakshatra lord is also one of the factors that you have to assess during the prediction this factor also has influence in the prediction and remember this is not the only factor for prediction i said this is one of the factors that influences so the nakshatra lord or star lord has a role during the prediction why does venus in this case deliver diseases because the moon is the lord of the eighth house to the sagittarius if the moon is amavasya it will deliver only deaths and diseases to the sagittarius ascendant during the major planetary period of venus that resides in rohini nakshatra so does venus that is positioned in the house of taurus is always beneficial you have to make the prediction whether the planet is going to deliver the benefits or adverse effects based on which house the house of taurus is to the ascendant we are checking the effects of the planets in the house of taurus you have to also consider which house is taurus to the ascendant based on which you have to make the predictions when a benefic is in its own house and that house being sixth house to the ascendant then the major planetary period of that benefic will bring deaths and diseases to the natal additionally if it has got connection of a malefic such as saturn rahu or mars the life of the native will be ruined by the deaths for sagittarius ascendant this is the effect of venus in the 6th house to the sagittarius ascendant if venus is in the 12th house to the sagittarius ascendant and strengthens its own house taurus by its 7th aspect the major planetary period of venus to the sagittarius ascendant will be bad furthermore if the 12th house venus is afflicted by malefic then the life of the sagittarius ascendant native will be miserable it will not let the native to improve in the life during the major planetary period that is dasha of the venus it will provoke the native to get involved in the affairs or wrong professions or the business that will get the native into financial crisis and thus there will be a hindrance to the improvement of the life for the native so you have to take into account which house taurus is to the ascendant taurus is the house of a natural benefic this is the own house of the natural benefic and when the natural benefic is in the own house it will deliver the effects of that particular house let us take an example the house of taurus is fifth house to the ascendant for example for capricorn or makar ascendant taurus is the fifth house to the ascendant then the venus is in taurus it delivers great benefits as lord of fifth house if the major planetary period of the lord of the fifth house happens it delivers benefits there is an intricacy that we can further explore here for capricorn lagna as an example there are only three stars where venus can reside when it is in the house of taurus the possible nakshatras of venus in this house could be krithika rohini and mrigashesha that is kirtigai rohini and mrigasirisham so when venus is the lord of the 5th and 10th house to the capricorn ascendant it is considered beneficial but based on nakshatra in taurus it is not favorable the planet lords of the three nakshatras krithika rohini and mrigashirsha or the sun the moon and the mars respectively 
based on these three nakshatra lord that is star lord venus will be in a status to deliver adverse effects let us evaluate the effects of venus with different star lords the first star is kritika whose planet lord is the sun sun is the lord of the eighth house to the ascendant so when venus resides in the star of kritika whose planet lord is sun that is the lord of the eighth house it is not favorable to the capricorn ascendant the sun as the lord of the eighth house will deliver its effects based on where it resides when venus resides in the star of mrigashirsha whose star lord is mars it will deliver the effects of the fourth house and the 11th house astrology is nothing but the combination of rules and exceptions there are huge number of permutations and combinations to be considered for accurate predictions when venus becomes the lord of the 5th or 9th house to any ascendant it is beneficial based on the statement that when a natural benefic is in the 5th bhava or the 9th bhava it is beneficial venus in taurus is of course good in certain situations when venus is aspected by jupiter it is also beneficial i have already mentioned the shortcoming when venus is aspected by jupiter there will be a shortcoming in progeny and marital pleasure based on my research of thousands of natal charts i have proved that this statement is true if you are a good astrologer you would have observed these in all the natal charts it is very beneficial when venus and jupiter are in the 6 8 axis that is shashtashtaka in a good natal chart venus and jupiter will be in 6 8 axis that is shashtashtaka the reason is that these two planets are contrary in their nature of character and they must not be positioned opposite to each other in a good natal chart venus and jupiter will be in 6 8 axis so when venus and jupiter aspects each other then the karaka or significance of the venus and jupiter will be affected this is one of the intricacies that you will learn when you go in depth in astrology the next planet that we are going to discuss is saturn saturn also gets subhatva in the house of taurus this is the house of the venus which is very much liked by the saturn saturn is the planet that behaves like a rowdy or ruffian yet it will tend to behave good when it is positioned in the house of venus saturn gets subhatva in the house of venus when saturn is in conjunction with venus in the house of taurus the venus will be afflicted and saturn gets subhatva having said this the major planetary period that is dasha of the saturn will be good whereas the major planetary period that is dasha of venus will be bad saturn gets subhatva here and when saturn is aspected by jupiter it is more beneficial if saturn is the planet that has the highest subhatva in a natal chart then the natal will take the professions related to saturn when saturn is in conjunction with venus it is favorable for saturn but not favorable for venus do you know why based on the subhatva of the house logic when saturn is in the house of taurus or house of libra that is rishabha or tula house one house of the venus will be good and the other one will be spoiled the status of the wife or the other significations will be spoiled the marital pleasure will be spoiled if the native is married in addition to this if rahu is in the house of venus either taurus or libra it will make it worse 
the native might not enjoy marital pleasure or will not be interested in the marital pleasure or or the spouse will not be cooperative these are the shortcomings when saturn is in the house of venus or in conjunction with venus so for a position of a planet in a particular house there is a benefit and there is an adverse effect as well having said all these when saturn is in the house of venus it is beneficial the house of taurus is a friendly house to the saturn when saturn is the ascendant lord for example the native is capricorn that is makar ascendant and saturn being in the house of taurus is beneficial though a malefic like saturn should not be in the trine saturn will affect the house based on which bhava it is to the ascendant yet it delivers benefits to the native of the capricorn ascendant because lagna lord saturn is sanctified and it is in the friendly house when saturn is in the fifth house for capricorn that is makar ascendant it will affect the status of the sun yet it will deliver benefits to the native there are certain conditions when the saturn will deliver benefits for the capricorn ascendant when saturn is in the fifth house and the house lord is venus let us say venus is exalted it is a general rule that the malefic has to be in the quadrant and the benefic has to be in the trine in contrast to this if saturn is in the trine then the son or the daughter of the native will not be in a good status the native would have given rise to a son or daughter who is not good the native will not even get the least benefit from their children there is another perception here when the ascendant lord saturn is in the house of taurus from one point of view it is indeed beneficial the native will be in a good status but the status of his child is spoiled when you mix and match the karaka of a planet and the house effects you can make accurate predictions when a client comes to you for the prediction they don't even need to mention the purpose of their visit just by taking a look at the chart you can tell them instantaneously the prediction and the reason for what they have come the client will respond to you nodding the head with yes and they will agree to your prediction if you understand the nature of the karaka bhava and the house effects and furthermore if you understand the relationship between the planets that i explain now to you you can make accurate predictions i recently mentioned that the malefic has to be in the quadrant and the benefic has to be in the trine and i connected the house effects and the karaka of the saturn and explained how to make predictions if you understand what i explained to you you can definitely make good predictions this is why i want to explain these concepts to my subscribers well we know that when a malefic is in the trine it is not auspicious but we have to think further that what would happen if a malefic is in the trine the fifth house to the capricorn that is makar ascendant is the house of a benefic when the house is aspected by jupiter or when venus the house lord of the taurus gets exalted the ascendant lord saturn gets subhatva yet saturn spoils the house effects of the fifth house saturn is a natural malefic so it spoils the house effects of the fifth house in this case what would happen the children of the capricorn ascendant native will not be in a good status or there will be misunderstanding between the children and the native of the capricorn ascendant or the native will be in a position who will face a lot of challenges in the upbringing of his or her children there will be some disappointment due to the children even if the native is in a good status 
he or she will face disappointments due to the children. This is where the bhava number factors into calculation. You have to check which bhava it is to the ascendant. In general, if a natural malafic loses its strength in the 6th house or 8th house or 12th house, then it is beneficial. To add further, if it gets subatva, it will deliver benefits. So, when Saturn is in the house of Taurus, it is beneficial. The next planet that we are going to discuss is Rahu. Aries, Taurus, Cancer, Virgo and Capricorn, that is Mesh, Vrishab, Kark, Kanya and Makar or the houses that are auspicious to Rahu. Among these five houses which are auspicious to Rahu, the Taurus is the most significant house for Rahu. Rahu in the house of Taurus is good. Can you think about the reason? The Aries is the house of Mars. Jupiter is the foremost significant natural benefic and the next significant natural benefic is Venus. Jupiter is not the house lord of any of the auspicious houses of Rahu among Aries, Taurus, Cancer, Virgo and Capricorn that is Mesh, Vrishab, Kark, Kanya and Makar. Rahu in dual sign is not said to be auspicious except Virgo and any other dual sign is not said to be auspicious for Rahu. When Rahu is in Taurus whose house lord is Venus which is the second most significant natural benefic and Taurus is a fixed sign, it is very auspicious for Rahu. Rahu in the house of Taurus will deliver great benefits provided Venus, the house lord of the Taurus, is strong. If Venus is in quadrant, it is auspicious or if it gets exalted, it is called as Malavya Yoga. If only Venus is in the quadrant to the ascendant and in its own house, it is Malavya Yoga. If Venus is in Taurus and Taurus becomes first house or fourth house or seventh house or tenth house from the ascendant, it is Malavya Yoga. If Venus is exalted and Rahu is in Taurus, then the major planetary period of Rahu delivers great benefits based on the nature of the house. Additionally, if the Taurus house is the third or eleventh house in a natal chart, then the major planetary period of Rahu will deliver crores of money. The native will not be able to reveal to others the way he or she earned the money. This is the nature of the planet Rahu. Because Rahu will not let the native to earn in honest ways. When the house of Taurus becomes the third or eleventh house and when Rahu is positioned here and the house lord Venus is exalted, then the major planetary period of Rahu will deliver great benefits. For Cancer Ascendant, the Taurus is the 11th house and Venus gets exalted in the 9th house to the Cancer. And if Rahu is in Taurus, then the major planetary period of Rahu will deliver great benefits to the Cancer Ascendant native. Please don't make a prediction that Venus is in the enemy house or the house of Padagadibadi. When Rahu is positioned in Taurus, it nullifies the status of Padagadibadi for Venus. It means Venus as Padagadibadi is no more effective, that is, it loses the ability to deliver the bad effects because Rahu is a shadow planet. So, if the house of Taurus is the third house or eleventh house or even any other house, then Rahu in the house of Taurus is beneficial. In any situation, Rahu in the house of Taurus will deliver benefits provided Venus is not afflicted and Rahu does not have connection with malefic planets such as Saturn or Mars. In case, if Rahu gets connection with Jupiter, it is more beneficial. 
Despite many criteria, the major planetary period of Rahu will deliver benefits. Whatever ascendant is, Rahu should not get the connection of Saturn or Mars. When Rahu gets the connection of Saturn or Mars, it will persuade the native in bad ways and there will be adverse effects. The Taurus Rahu is good. The native will earn money in smart ways when Rahu is in the house of Taurus. Based on the ascendant and based on which planet is Subhatwa to the ascendant and based on the strength of the Venus, the major planetary period that is Dasha of Rahu will deliver benefits. Certainly, Venus must not be debilitated. Even if Venus is Nichabanga, that is cancellation of debility, or when Venus is directly debilitated, Rahu will lose the strength to deliver the benefits. When Rahu is in conjunction with Jupiter in the house of Venus, or when the Venus, house lord of Taurus, is exalted, provided it has no connection with Saturn or Mars, Rahu delivers great benefits. I will tell you one more point which is very very important to note. Here, Rahu should not be in conjunction with the moon because Rahu should not be in conjunction with an exalted planet. In the house of Taurus, the moon gets exalted. So, Rahu should not be in conjunction with the moon. In general, Rahu never delivers its benefits when it is in conjunction with the exalted planet. When Rahu is in conjunction with the debilitated planet, it will give great benefits. There is no status of exaltation or debilitation for these two planets Rahu and Ketu. Please do not make predictions based on the points that Rahu or Ketu is exalted or debilitated in a particular house. Please make predictions based on the following statements such as this is the house which is liked by Rahu very much, this is the house of a natural benefic, this is the most auspicious house to Rahu among the fixed signs and likewise. To enjoy the benefits of Rahu, definitely the native must go through the major planetary period of Rahu. The next planet that we are going to discuss is Ketu. To a certain extent, the house of Taurus is auspicious to Ketu. Ketu in Scorpio, that is Vrshik, does great benefits. Ketu will deliver benefits only in the house of Aquarius, Scorpio and Virgo, that is Kumbh, Vrshik and Kanya. Whether it is Rahu in Taurus or Ketu in Taurus, it will deliver the pleasure of a woman, gains by women, support through women like mother's support, the support of the sister and even the support of the daughters. There will be support and benefits through women and even female friends or even benefits through garments of the female which is the Karaka or significance of Venus. The Rahu or Ketu always tend to reflect the significance of the house based on the concept of Subhatva and Pabhatva. Please try to understand these concepts. Rahu will tend to behave the same as Venus. To add further, I will say something very important. The effects of the Rahu will be delivered based on the age of the native. The major planetary period of Rahu should not happen when the native is young because the major planetary period of Rahu will behave like the major planetary period of Venus. It is better if the native is between 32 to 50 years. The major planetary period of Rahu should not happen when the native is older as well. In this case, it is really beneficial for the native. Even if the major planetary period of Rahu happens at 25 years, then it will divert the native towards the wrong path. 
the major planetary period of the rahu residing in taurus will be like that of major planetary period of venus in certain situations you can make predictions of major planetary periods of rahu as follows if rahu is positioned in a house don't make predictions based on the planet rahu instead check the house where rahu is positioned to predict the major planetary period of rahu i had written an article on how a planet would behave when the star lord or nakshatra lord is rahu i had even published a video on how to make predictions for a planet whose star lord that is nakshatra lord is rahu when rahu is in a house it behaves like a house lord of that house so when you make predictions treat the major planetary period of rahu in taurus as the major planetary period of venus when ketu is positioned in taurus the effects will be delivered based on the age of the native when the major planetary period of ketu happens at a younger age for the native rather inclining the native towards spiritual life it will lead the native to enjoy luxurious life based on the strength of the venus in general ketu is a planet of wisdom it will take a person on a spiritual path and the native will tend to hate the family life the native will incline to worship lord shiva but when ketu is positioned in the house of taurus ketu will stumble ketu will deliver the effects based on the house it is positioned so when venus is exalted ketu in the house of taurus during the major planetary period or minor planetary period of ketu that is dasha or antar dasha of ketu will deliver marriage marital pleasures acquaintances with women and happiness by women benefits by women etc when venus is debilitated the effects of ketu will differ if rahu or ketu is in the house of venus and venus is debilitated it will affect the relationship with the wife the relationship with women will also be affected there will be problems for the native due to women the native will face humiliation due to women so we have discussed both the positive and negative effects during the major planetary period of rahu and ketu you have to make predictions for the planet in taurus based on the strength of the venus the planets in the house of taurus will deliver its effects based on the house lord venus please give importance to assess the strength of venus the dispositor of taurus that is the house lord of taurus while making predictions and give secondary importance to assess the friendship or enemy status and please give primary importance to the concept of subhatva strength and pavatva strength having said all these ketu in the house of taurus is beneficial based on the strength of the venus it will deliver benefits taurus is the house of venus which is a natural benefit that delivers materialistic pleasures so ketu will not deliver the spiritual wisdom rather it will offer materialistic pleasures and pleasure through spouse In the upcoming video we will discuss the effects of the planets in the house of Gemini. Thank you. The link of the Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of the Google app is also given in the description box which is available only for Android users. and please write your feedback to astro.writeus@gmail.com thank you